Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of my favourite people and some of the country's biggest stars and a lady that I've got a huge amount of respect for. She always comes back bigger and better and just when you think it might all be over, she impresses you with something better still. Denise Welsh, how are you? I'm all right, me darling. Thank you very much. I'm sitting in the old stomping ground on South Bank in in London. Um, So uh, many memories and um, yeah, well... Having a, we're having a good old day. It's it, lovely to talk to you. It's great to talk to you. And it seems to me, and I might be wrong, that you're in an amazing place now and a positive place and a happy place. Yeah, I am, actually. A lot of that is to do with my, my marriage and obviously my sobriety and, you know, my kids are doing well and all of, all of those outside things that I, that I have control over, um, that, that's brilliant. So um, outside of the episodes that I, that I still have, my life is great and, and sobriety has been the best thing that could have happened to me. Mental health fascinates me because I always wonder, I've never, I've been depressed, I've been frustrated, I've been sacked and had to fight back and all that, but I've never been able to not get out of bed. No, no, no. it's a, well, because it's an illness and, and, you know, I, what, it's kind of like, not in a cruel way, I would like everybody in the entire world to, well, not in the entire world, but first world problems, but I would like everybody to experience clinical depression for 30 seconds and then for it to go away again and never revisit them Mm. so that people can understand the difference when at my worst when i this is years ago i mean i still have you know i live with mental illness i i i I have it to this to this day but most of the time i'm absolutely fine and and i manage it to the best of my ability but um, one of my worst ever episodes was probably about 15 years ago and my depression was so thick that I lost the ability to move my hands and my face so my face was twisted to the point that it looked like they I had Bell's palsy and my hands were like I was had a massive rheumatoid arthritis that's how thick the depression was as a physical condition as well as a mental condition um it's it's the most isolating cruel illness and you can't see it and you can't understand it if you've never had it before. Mm. And it's funny because we haven't all, touch wood, had cancer, but people understand it. It has a physical manifestation or people people can kind of a, a, appreciate how much pain the person's in, but somehow it's more difficult with mental illness. And that's why with this association with Moonpig today, because I, and Mind, obviously I've been, as you know, I've been an ambassador for Mind for several years and spoken out, you know, because of my own, my, my own condition and trying to raise awareness and break down the stigma and da 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 da, da. And I'd, I've said, I, I've constantly been going on about this for a long time now saying, did you know that people never send a get well card to anybody or any flowers to anybody who's mentally ill? Mm. And people would think about it and go, actually you're dead right because my uncle was mentally ill or my niece was mentally ill and I didn't reach out I didn't get in touch I didn't I didn't send them anything and yet if your niece had broken a leg or if your niece had cancer if your niece had had a heart problem you would immediately reach out with with a card or with flowers or with something and um and it's you know it's 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 one of those things that people don't think about and yet when just recently I had an episode and I went to my front door and on the doorstep was three sunflowers and a little card just saying thinking of you and what that meant was you understand that I'm really poorly and although I'm 30 years nearly down the line imagine if you are just you know if if, if you are someone who hasn't experienced um, mental illness for very long and you think that people don't understand you wake up and someone sent you a card and it says I believe you're poorly and it means such a lot so um, that's why you know we're doing the plant a smile today and it's so lovely because here on the south bank we've come indoors to do the interviews but people are walking along with a flower and and and, and we've been saying to them you know do you know anybody who's, who's who's struggling with mental health issues have you thought of reaching out to them with a bunch of flowers or a card and they say no i haven't but i will now and they're all planting a little smile and every single person is saying yes i do know somebody and no i haven't thought of doing that mm. so so it's just been great to be part of that today and, and to try and get rid of this bloody Blue Monday malarkey because it's kind of insulting to people who live with mental health issues all year. But like you say, I get that January is people are fed up, 
course. It's grim, it's grey, it's cold. You know, people have spent all their money at Christmas, they're, they're back at work, the summer holidays are months away. So of course people are going to be fed up, but that's a damn sight different to being depressed. Do you think the world's harder now? I mean, this came on for you after the birth of your son, so it's nothing yeah. to do with social media or the business. No. But no. now in a 2017 world, I see people reacting to everything, every little thing now, and you get oh, to I see think... it. That yeah, doesn't help. No, I think it's. I, I think you're absolutely right. You know, there, people's illness starts for different reasons, whether it's hormonal, whether it's psychological. You know, with, but the thing is that yeah, when it when it actually comes, the feeling is the same. But how it starts, you're dead right, is completely different. And I really, really, really um, um, get very concerned about young people and young people's mental health. There is huge pressure on kids to conform and be a certain way and. You know, the other thing is cyberbullying, which I'm passionate about speaking out. When I was at school, I was very lucky that I wasn't, I, 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 you know, I wasn't a victim of bullying. But then it was kids in the playground and your mum came up and, you know, and, 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 and sp spoke to the teacher about it. And that's horrible in itself. And that is still going on. Thing is, what's happening now is people are filming those attacks. They're going, you know, they're going viral. People are bullying, people are trolling on social media. And it's very, very hard for young people to process it. And also, they don't want to come off it because they don't feel part of society. So they won't, they won't not be part of it. And it's, um, it's really, really stressful for them. And also, you know, the media have to take responsibility for these images that they're creating of this, you know, the perfect this and the perfect that. And, um, you know, teenage girls magazines are all looks orientated and they shouldn't be. It should be about what you can be achieving, you know, and, and, and it's, just, it's upsetting. And, and so I can't really change that. I just have to do my little bit to, to get on a soapbox and raise awareness where I can. As we sit here now, could you see it coming if you were going to go into another funk and that you were going to go downhill? Yeah, I, it, yeah, completely. I mean, with me, it started. It, it blindsides me. It, it doesn't. Mine is endogenous a lot of the time, so it's not reactive to anything. So, I can be sitting talking to you now. I can be walking down the road. I can be watching television. I can be having tea with friends. I can be in the middle of filming something, and it usually starts for me with a tingling in my palms, and then wherever I am, the atmosphere will change and it becomes almost dreamlike and I will immediately start projecting and start worrying about the minutiae of life that I wouldn't normally worry about and that's when I know I'm going down right. and what I do is if I can I am much 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 kinder to myself than I used to be and I know what I have to do which is just go home, take it easy. Lincoln is brilliant, mm. as, as was Tim, you know, and, um, and both completely understanding. I've, I, I've been so lucky with family uh, with regards to them understanding my, my, my illness. I don't know what I would have done, you know, um, if, if I hadn't had them. And, um, and, and I just am kinder to myself. If I want to go to bed for three days, I, I do. And um, I'm, I'm healthier physically, so I think that, that helps. Um, and I just have to wait till it passes because I'm not self-medicating anymore. The periods of, of me being poorly are usually much more short-lived. Like it can be, it can be two or three days, mm. and then it will physically start to lift like a blanket. I think those around you, including myself, who really care about you and think you're great, it, it can become a freak show, and we see this in show business. And some people are not making it because of the media and the fact that they're photographed falling out of this place and that place. I, I guess for you it's been a package, hasn't it? Because the, the booze was a big problem. You've talked about this in your book, that, that getting everything in line, I suppose, makes clarity for your mental health. Because obviously yeah. if you're drunk, you're not going to know whether you're coming or going. The, the media portrayal of me, I mean, you know, within all the madness that was going on, I also managed to keep a marriage together for 24 years, raise two children and, yeah. and be, be an award-winning actress. So yeah. there was a certain image that, that by being on Loose Women, I was kind of perpetuating, as it were. Yeah. But, you know, there was a lot of reasons why my life was in the public eye and other people who were living, a, you know, whatever, mm. weren't. So it was unfortunate for me. And, and yes, I did self-medicate and that didn't help and I struggled. But, you know, I'm five years sober this year and it's all behind me and you are a product of your experiences and I, I wouldn't swap any of it because I couldn't be happier and in a better place than I am now. 
You know, when you read your own CV, do you pinch yourself? Because to be in Coronation Street and EastEnders and Soldier Soldier and do Loose Women for 10 years, it's a remarkable career. Yeah, I mean, I've been very lucky and it's been very, it's been very, very varied, you know. I don't and think luck would get you through that many gigs, though, would it? Luck will only take you so far. Yeah, I'm a good actress. <laughs> and people like you and you can't buy that. You know, I think Loose Woman gave me a bit of a Marmite approach, but I think that's why it was the time for me to leave that because I wanted people to um, be reminded that actually I am I am an actress, and yeah. you know I love my I love my presenting gigs. It's just that I don't feel the need to be on television for the sake of it anymore. I I'm a, I'm in a, you know it's not like the script bus goes by my house every day and I can pick and choose you know like an A-list American star, but you know I I'm in a position whereby I don't have to take everything that's offered to me. And I love that because I like being at home. I've got a son who's doing his GCSEs. I've got a husband whose career is going brilliantly in the art yeah. world. And, I, you know, I want to go to L.A. at the end of the month with him. I want to go to Brisbane when he opens in a big exhibition in, in August. I want to be free to do those things. And I love being in the position to, to, to do that as well because, you know, I've there's often I've put things before my, my personal life. And now I wouldn't dream of doing that. It's too important to me. Is it thrilling when you stand there and your husband is the star or your son is the star? Because that's happened now, hasn't it? Where it's no longer no, Denise love, is the star. No I, no, I love it. I love it. I love getting pushed off the red carpet in America because of um, Matthew or Lincoln. I'm more than happy, thank you. They can both save for my rest home and I'm more than happy with that. Isn't it incredible? I mean, you look at what Lincoln's doing and his stuff is remarkable. I mean, you can't, again, you can't buy that. That's just pure well, gift, that's, isn't that's, it? That's us, that's us, you know. Um, battling our demons together and everything, and um, and you know it's, we're just we're just in a in in a in a very good place, and that's why I want to I want to you know reach out to people who aren't in a good place to say, look, I still have depression, but I'm in a really good place because mm. I don't always have it, yeah. and that's that's what I wanted when I was really really poorly. I'm not defined by my by my depression, and that's you know that's why. I'm here today doing what I'm doing. Do employers need to work more with mind and understand yes, mental illness? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Mm. I did. A, I did a speech about a year ago at this big um, uh, pharmaceutical company. It's actually not related to it being a pharmaceutical company, but I did a big speech because they were having a physical well-being week for their staff and a mental well-being week, and they were incredible the way they treat the mental well-being of their staff because bearing in mind if one in four people are suffering from a mental illness if we don't get on top of this mm. it's going to be even more than that so they had paid for them all to have the headspace app on their phone they had paid for um that they, they had people like me coming in to give a talk about my own experiences and then talk to people afterwards they had um a meditation area where people could take 15, 20 minutes out of their working day and just go and chill out and put their put their headspace app on. And those things are very, very, very important mm. to show your staff that you are that you care about their mental well being. Um, and and I was really very, very impressed with this company. And I think that should be happening more so because if we don't look after people's mental health, it's going to impact hugely on their business. And I guess the curse of loneliness is another thing that triggers mental health yeah. issues. Well, do you know something? What what Moonpig and Mind have discovered is that um, is that fifty percent of people who are currently um, dealing with mental health issues feel that they have nobody to talk to or that nobody understands them. And as somebody who did have people around them, I can't imagine what that's like. And that's why we have to, in in in, in such a little way, you know, send a bouquet, give them a card, and say, "You may not want to talk right now. I just want you to know I love you and I care about you." Mm. And very finally, before I let you go, I saw you on bots the other day. I know the papers love to whip up that you're going back in. Will we be seeing no, you I'm back not going there? Back in. No, no, never in a million years. I want it, and what would be the point of me going in? But I love to watch it. I don't like what I'm seeing this year. It seems to no, be a lot of baiting, and it's taken a different turn, hasn't it? No, I don't. I don't. I don't like it. I. I didn't like the task last night. I don't like anything that you know. That house is a hotbed of whatever anyway you you know mm. but I don't like it when they start trying to make people bitchy and nasty and I don't like um encouraging bullying either I don't like seeing that as entertainment so it's um no it's not a very not a very pleasant 
pleasant house, but I hope that the nice guy wins. I'd like to see Callum win. You said something earlier that's very profound about the Facebook thing, that people are now getting entertainment seeing two kids beat each other up, and it seems like that's what's happening on telly. We've got to be really careful about that. We really have to be careful of, of it all. I don't, I don't think that the Mr. Nasties, I'm not talking about Simon Cowell, Mr. Nasties, I'm talking about other people in the media who have vehicles in order to bully and bash, and mm. I think that if kids see that, it makes it okay um, to do so, and I think we have to, we have to really stop that, because if we have people who are in a position of power and who have a massive reach, um, either on radio or television or in print, if we see them fat shaming and bullying, that means that it's okay to kick the ginger, kick the ginger fat kid in the playground, mm. and it's not, and mm. it really, really irritates me yeah. and annoys me and upsets me. Very finally, um, let's just do a couple of things for you. You've got a new novel coming out. The hardback of If They Could See Me Now did well, and now it's out in paperback, and I always think I'm a paperback demographic because that's how I buy books. I just go in and yep. go, oh, that cover looks nice. Oh, it's her. Oh, that looks nice. Um, I think it's taken a while for people to realise that it's a novel and not an autobi- you know, another autobiography, yep. which is great. And then my second novel comes out in June. The Mother's Bond, and it's set in set in the Northeast. It's not anything to do with me, but I have to write about what I know yeah. until I'm clever enough to not write about what I know. But at the moment, I do. So yeah, it's fantastic for me to be taken seriously as a novelist. How exciting is that? Well, and I've just written the um, I've written the forward for Martina Cole's book. Um, Martina Cole has got a 25th celebration edition out. Um, of her first novel, Dangerous Lady, and she asked me to write the foreword. So I was thrilled. I get really chuffed about things wow. like that. It's a great yeah. honour, isn't it? You could pick anyone. It is, yeah. It Fantastic. Is. Uh, Panto, December 10th, coming back to uh, your hometown. This is going to be brilliant. They're putting a big Next tent. Year. Yeah, fantastic. I know they are. A pop up one. I haven't done one for years. And I just thought, if I'm going to do one, I'll do one in Manchester or Newcastle. And so I'm doing it in Newcastle. And also, because I like the idea of it being, A, it's short, and it's uh, interactive. So the minute the kids walk through the door, yeah. there's going to be something going on. So I just think it'll be really exciting. I was just at the Palladium on Tuesday. There's nothing better than them when they're done well, is it? It's just when wonderful. When they're done well, absolutely. Yeah. And I want this to be a really, really um, traditional, traditional one. And you say next year, but it's this year, isn't it? December 10th. God, I suppose it is. Yeah. yeah, get your tickets now. And is there any hope we'll see you back on Loose Women? Because I loved you on that show. You know I love that anybody who's got an opinion who's willing to come yeah. back. Yeah, not, um, not, not, not right now. Yeah, I made no bones about it. You know, a new producer came in and she had her own direction and I didn't agree with the direction, so I left, as did the others. End of story. Yeah. Hey, listen, I love you very much. Congratulations on everything. If you want to find out more, just put in Moon Pig Mind into Google. It will come up with this wonderful uh, project just to basically raise a smile across the South Bank, which is happening today. But more importantly, go to the Mind website where you can find out all the information about anything to do with mental health. If you're feeling a bit down, if you don't know why, they've got resources that will help you out there. And Denise Walsh... I wish you all the best for 2017. You're one of my favorite people. Thank you so much for the chat. Bye, darling. Bye.